Welcome to Atheist Talk. I'm your host this evening. My name is George Kane. Minnesota Atheists was founded in 1991 from the Minnesota chapter of American Atheists when the national organization ended its program of state affiliates. Some of the founding members of Minnesota Atheists have been prominent leaders in the organization ever since. When I joined Minnesota Atheists a few years later, I got the impression that most of the members were quite mature. I got the impression that people seemed to reach the atheist conclusion rather late in life. Well, times have changed. Many of the regular attendees at Minnesota Atheist events now are in their 20s, and some of them have stepped up to assume leadership roles. Tonight, I'd like to introduce to the viewing audience the two top officers of Minnesota Atheists. They're our president, Eric Jane, and our chair, Heather Hagee. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you George. for having us. All right. So, Eric, how long have you been a member of Minnesota Atheists? Well, a uh, couple of things real quick is yeah. that uh, as much as I would like to claim that I'm in my 20s, uh, I am in my 30s, uh, Heather, uh, I know is in her 20s, but yep. uh, uh, point still stands though, because you're right, right. <laughs> a lot of uh, atheists do reach that conclusion in their 20s. Um, I did as well, but, but uh, unfortunately I'm almost in my 40s now. Um, and then secondly is, I, I, I think that uh, Heather and I and, and uh, everybody else uh, on the board right now and who will be sub uh, subsequently on the board uh, are very grateful and, and are the benefits beneficiaries of being um, able to follow the leadership uh, from you and from Shirley, from Steve, from August, from many people who are working on this production right now. So, um, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of, of a lot of people who have who've, uh, really set a really good foundation uh, for the Minnesota Atheist to kind of grow and prosper. For um, the geezers, I thank you. Yes. <laughs> You're very welcome. And your question again, I'm sorry, what was your question again, George? Well, I, uh, well, first off, how long have you been a member of Minnesota Atheist? Okay, a member, an official dues-paying member, not to be confused with somebody who just kind of attends some of the meetup events that you see online, but actually paying money. Uh, 2009 is when I started uh, actually becoming a dues-paying member of Minnesota Atheist. And what positions did you hold before being elected president? Uh, before being elected president, I was... Uh, Previous was associate president mm -hmm. in 2011, oh wait, 2012. And then in 2011 is when I joined the board for the first time as a director at large. Uh, before that, um, I had attended a few different meetup events. That, that's kind of what got me into the Minnesota Atheist was uh, joining some of the uh, meetup events. Um, and you led some of those events, didn't you? What's that? And you, you were a leader of some of those events. Some too. of those events, yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I had started, the very first event that I went to was uh, a meeting, one of our um, Sunday meetings at the Rondo Library back in 2009. Um, the topic was uh, teaching evolution in, in uh, the science classroom. PZ Myers was there, Greg mm -hmm. Layden. Um, Sahoya was there as well, and there's somebody else, and I cannot remember uh, who that was, but there's another person there as well. Um, and then from there, I joined uh, a, a book club in Burnsville, uh, got involved with that, and then I uh, got involved with a couple other different kinds of events as well. <laughs> Excuse me real quick, my cell phone <laughs> just kind of beeped. So <laughs> got to make sure that's off. Yeah, we're just going to make sure that's off right now. Sorry about that. And, um, and then from there... Uh, I ended up uh, reading something online about there being some de-baptisms that were going on in Ohio, and I thought it would be really fun to do some of these kinds of events as well. Uh, and I reached out to a couple different people who were on the board at the time, um, and then Jack uh, Caravella, who is just an extraordinary uh, leader uh, with the Minnesota Atheists, was uh, very kind to encourage me to just kind of take this on my own. So I uh, organized a uh, de-baptism event where we take a hair dryer and, uh, you know, instead of dunking people in the water, we blow dry, uh, uh, you know, them and de-baptize them. So that was my very first event. And then uh, August encouraged me to 
joined the board, so I ran for the board, became a director at large, associate president, and then president. So that's a very long <laughs> answer to your question. So, yes. All right. Very good. And Heather, uh, how long have you been with Minnesota Atheists? Well, I only moved to Minnesota in 2009, late 2009, uh, from Nebraska. I came here for grad school. And then I uh, started doing events with Minnesota Atheists early 2010. I enjoyed going to events and all that. And it was early 2011 in which I became a dues paying member. Mm -hmm. And then a year after that, I was asked to join the board and I uh, jumped right on in being chair. And that was 2012 and I got reelected, of course, and I have really enjoyed being the chair of Minnesota Atheists. Oh, great. I, some in our audience may not understand the difference between the chair and president. So how do you distinguish your roles? What do you do as chair? As chair, I get to run the monthly public meetings we mm -hmm. hold in the library, as well as our monthly board meetings that we have just for the board to uh, arrange all the events that we uh, conduct and just the business of Minnesota Atheists, because we are indeed like a nonprofit organization and we do follow standards of a nonprofit organization. And Eric? As president? As president, um, I guess I'm kind of uh, following in the, in, in the footsteps of uh, August uh, to try to do a lot of uh, community outreach, mm -hmm. uh, be, be kind of the face of Minnesota Atheists uh, as best as I can, um, and just try to tr come up with different innovative ideas about how to move the organization forward or in other kind of uh, fun, adventurous directions. I think Heather's position as chair is an extraordinary one, and I think that she does it very well. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's, it's one that uh, requires a lot more organizational efforts than what I think that I have the capabilities to do. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a tough position to, to be in the chair, and I think that, yeah, you, you do it very well. Thank you. Yeah. I agree. I think both of you have done a great job. Thanks, George. But Eric, how do you see the state of Minnesota atheists as you have taken over the, the reins? Well, <laughs> I think the state of Minnesota atheists is one, um, it's, very, it, it's a very strong state. It's, I, I think that right now the organization is, uh, is growing, it's prospering mm -hmm. uh, more. And, 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 it's something that it's been a trajectory. It's something that has been kind of ongoing. So I feel that I'm benefiting from all the hard work that everybody else has done by, by putting the organization on this trajectory, this upward trajectory. And um, I feel like it's gotten even a little bit more visible since uh, uh, this past couple of years. Uh, we've been a little bit more aggressive in promoting ourselves. Uh, we've had our billboard campaign, we've had our AINTS game, which I know we'll probably talk more about, mm -hmm. but uh, um, I think with these kinds of elements where we're able to kind of put ourselves out there a little bit more, it's one that's, uh, that's become a little bit more um, uh, visible and I think that's going to bring in more members. I think it has brought in more members and I think our membership has been more diverse. Uh, and it's increasingly more and more diverse, uh, different ethnicities, uh, all kinds of different backgrounds uh, joining the, the Minnesota Atheists. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's kind of how I see where the state of Minnesota Atheists is. So, Heather, what, uh, how do you see it from the position of the chair? I th think a lot of our, st our strength is that we do have so many events that we we sponsor our group to be at the Pride Parade and have a booth there. And we uh, rent the State Capitol Rotunda on the Day of Reason and uh, have, make sure our voice is heard. And just all the volunteers that we have that's, that are doing book clubs, doing crafty free thinkers. I mean, who would have thought that would have a group for crafty think free thinkers? Um, and just all the events are what I really think bring the members of Minnesota Atheists together. Um, things that I think we, we might need to work on a little bit is uh, just 
more, more awareness, awareness that we are in fact a, a 501 nonprofit organization uh, and, uh, and just reaching out to the people that are in their 20s and making sure that they see enough value in our organization to become a dues paying member because I don't think we do have too many actual dues paying members that are in that age range whereas they, they are the up and coming people that are you're seeing them more and more at events and we I do think that we do need to make a better effort to get them to become dues paying members in the future. Let me ask about uh, that sort of outreach. Uh, an atheist living in the Twin Cities is going to bump into uh, several different organizations. There's the Humanists of Minnesota. There's CASH, if they're you know, associated with the university at all. There's uh, a Minnesota chapter now of Americans United for Separation of Church and State. There's a, uh, a Minnesota uh, chapter that's getting started of the Secular Coalition for America. Where does Minnesota atheists fit in on all of that and what's the attraction that would make a, a person say, oh, well, I want to join Minnesota atheists. That's my group. Well, I'd say we're the oldest, the most established group. We have the most resources to do these things. We are our own organization. We're not underneath a national organization. We partner with national organizations, mm -hmm. but um, we are our own deal, and uh, we are kind of a catalyst for these other groups that are chapters. We uh, usually, when they have an event, they'll ask us to post it, so they will get more attendance at their events. And uh, I do almost think it's making that it thins us out a little bit more, but. There, there are plenty of atheists out there, and where there is a will, there is a way, and they will find members for the other groups. But I, I do think that Minnesota atheists is the most pro pro predominant one. Eric, you want to comment? Yeah, I think that's that's a great sales pitch right there. <laughs> we are the oldest, most established, uh, uh, free-thinking atheist organization, atheist-friendly organization. Um, you know, I think that what the Minnesota Atheist is able to do as well is that we're able to really have a very well-balanced approach to a lot of different issues that, that these other organizations, and they're fantastic organizations. And I know that we have a lot of interchanging members between these uh, organizations as well, and uh, we're very happy uh, to be working with them. They're, they're fantastic. Uh, but what I think I... I uh, I'm trying to say here, the, the best thing about Minnesota Atheists is that it's very well balanced. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, social justice issues, uh, like the American um, uh, Humanist or the Minnesota Humanist Organization uh, will do. We, we, um, you know, we, we do some community outreach with the local food shelves, with the food banks. Uh, we've done um, meals every month with uh, with the shelter, with the local shelter in St. Paul. So we, so we have the social justice element. We also have um, the separation of church and state efforts that we do. Uh, every year we're at the uh, Capitol Rotunda, like Heather had mentioned before, um, trying to highlight the importance of church and state separation for the Day of Reason. Um, we, um, we also do a lot of good community outreach, I think, uh, to just generally build tolerance and acceptance for atheists, for people especially who have taken on that atheist, the, the, the A word identity. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're somebody who really tries to address that, I think more than any, for sure, without a doubt, I think more than anybody else does, is that we really try to build up that tolerance for, for um, those who have um, taken on that atheist identity. And I, as you say, I think Minnesota Atheist has been more active, much more active mm -hmm. than any of these groups. Maybe the humanists are, are close. They've been very good lately at becoming more active. But, and then the size of our, uh, our mailing list is much larger, I think, than any of the other organizations. We have how many uh, on distribution? About 1,700, isn't it? I'm not good at remembering numbers. Okay. <laughs> 1,700 and growing, and yeah. growing. Or whatever the number is uh -huh. and growing. I know from our meetup site, um, 
I think it was maybe last year we were well under a thousand, I think like 700 and so there was a significant number that came up uh, last year, 666. I think we had reached 666. That was how many meetups we had uh, posted, Is not, that what it was? not the membership. That number. wasn't the membership. That okay. was how many events we have had in the past. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. But now whatever the number was <laughs> last year, now we have over 1400 members on the meetup mm -hmm. site, which again, are not dues paying members, right. whichever camera this is, I could look into, I'd look <laughs> in the camera and say that, you know, you need to make sure if you want to support this organization and you want to support these efforts to, to keep on going is that, uh, you know, just because you might be joining some of the meetup sites, it's really beneficial for everybody uh, to join Minnesota Atheists. Um, and you can do that by visiting the website and clicking the bar on top that says join and donate. So yep. there's a little plug. Yep. In our newsletter, our monthly newsletter, we have a <coughs> statement on page two every issue, a Minnesota Atheists mission statement. And I'll read that. Minnesota Atheists is dedicated to building a positive social, a positive atheist community, excuse me, <laughs> that actively promotes secular values through educational programs, social activities, and participation in public affairs, uh, which probably is a broader mission than, than any of the other groups. Uh, any comment on uh, that mission statement? Uh, anything you want to do to uh, expand that? Or? Well, um, here's the thing, George, is that I suppose the bleeding heart liberal in me, yeah. uh, the social work side of me, and I am a licensed full-time social worker, uh, would really love to put some sort of a, uh, uh, a social justice element uh -huh. somewhere within that mission statement. Um, and I know that that's, and I, and I totally get that. And, you know, I've grown in these past few years and understanding that there's been more uh, conservative atheist than I had realized. And that's something that I had to learn and I had to pick that up. But um, anyway, that, that, that would be my vision, my own personal vision, is to put some sort of a social justice element in there. I don't know if that would uh, uh, jibe well with everybody else or not. But um, otherwise, I think the mission statement that we have right now is very good. Mm -hmm. Comment, Heather? Um, well, I was just thinking earlier uh, when we we're stating why Minnesota Atheists is a better, well, uh, the, why you should join Minnesota Atheists rather than one of these other groups that are mm -hmm. joining up or why we should be our, the fir first place to go to is mainly because the word atheist. That's, that's like a, mm -hmm. That was a really good point. And I do think that uh, a vision for Minnesota Atheists is for us to be a force normalizing atheism in Minnesota and uh, nationally uh, just to for us to be able to sponsor a baseball game, for us to be at the state capitol, um, having a competitive number of attendees to the day of the this day of prayer, which is on the same day, for us to yeah, have that public image, for us not to be afraid of saying the word atheist, I think is very important be, because that really says something to uh, somebody who's always thought that atheists were these evil people <laughs> that have no morals, to just let people know that, hey, I'm an atheist, I'm a good person, I, I'm just like you, and, uh, and then I think just with normalizing atheism, we can help keep our secular nation secular. Yeah. And uh, we want so. conservative atheists and liberal atheists. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of my most spirited mm -hmm. conversations that I've had uh, with the uh, Minnesota atheists have been with uh, conservative atheists. So I, I, I really enjoy having the diversity of opinions and, and backgrounds uh, on uh, our membership. Yep. So uh, with you two in the leadership roles, what plans do you have for the organization? Eric? Uh, I am really enjoying moving our uh, organization forward with more and more community events, uh, volunteer events, uh, these outreach efforts that we've been doing. Uh, we have done uh, in, these pa well, in the past 12 months, we have packed food at the Emergency Food Network in New Hope 
That's uh, one of the largest food banks in the state of Minnesota that distributes food to uh, a, a variety of different food shelves uh, in the community in the Twin Cities metropolitan area, uh, doing uh, more uh, uh, shelter uh, lunches and dinners, um, um, doing some more polar plunges. You know, we in, in the middle of winter, uh, there's a group that uh, in White Bear Lake that that uh, wearing their Minnesota Atheist shirts and some swimming trunks, swimming suits, uh, jumped into, uh, what was it, White Bear Lake? Was it, it was actually White Bear Lake. Was it? I, I made it. It was, a, it, was a, it was a very cold lake <laughs> in the town of White Bear Lake uh, in the middle of winter. And, you know, so, so doing these kinds of things, and, and the proceeds from that then went to benefit. Um, oh, where did it go to benefit? Something, uh, something good, something philanthropic. <laughs> so just, you know, uh, trying to ramp up those philanthropic uh, efforts, I think, is something that I would really enjoy seeing the, the uh, organization uh, moving more uh, forward with. Mm-hmm. Heather, I wanted to start asking you about committees. Now, you are on the Public Policy Committee. What exactly does the Public Policy Committee do? The Public Policy Committee is the group that helps clarify where Minnesota Atheist stands on different issues concerning atheism. We um, just make stance on issues such as one that I thought was interesting was blue laws. We sit there's no secular reason to have the blue laws where you can't sell alcohol on Sundays. And uh, issues such as abortion, um, a woman's right to choose. There's uh, the, the pro-life movement is very religious and doesn't look at the science. And the Minnesota Atheist is, looks at the evidence, looks at what is real in the world, which that's what... Yeah, science tells you, and our public policy positions are just to, yeah, clarify our positions and their positions from uh, the committee, which are members. And I guess I don't have. All much right. More so, to say if our viewers that. want to know what our public policy positions are, what should they do? Go go online, MinnesotaAtheists.org. There's a tab for. Um, it's underneath the tab of like what who we are I think it's what it's called and there's a, a tab for public policies and it's a, it's a substantial document but it's pretty substantial yeah there's a lot of <laughs> words there <laughs> but it's, it's really neat to see where we stand on things and mm-hmm. if you don't like something you see on it let somebody who's on the public policy committee know and um, we might we'll take a second look at it and try to discern yeah. whether that's something that atheists should really be taking a stance on. And we do an annual review mm-hmm. of these policies. So yep. we confirm every year that the policies that we have already are still current and if uh, events have, hap- have transpired such that any changes are needed, we make those at that time. Now, the board, of course, is in charge of all operations of Minnesota Atheists, and we have many committees that do things. Of course, the board is responsible for the actions of the committees, and the chair runs the board. So the chair is sort of the, the head of, over, of oversight over all these committees. So could you tell us something about the other committees? Yeah, there's the membership committee, which keeps track of how many members we have and tries to make it easier for, well, to build membership. Um, The building committee, not quite as, well, we've been looking at possibly getting a building or renting, but it hasn't gone anywhere at this point. It's just, yeah, a committee to look into this stuff. Of course, the cable TV committee does the cable TV show, which I am on right now. (laughs) (laughs) And the radio committee, which uh, we have an atheist talk uh, radio program that is on air every Sunday morning, uh, 9 a.m. on KTNF 950. 9.50 a.m. 9.50 a.m. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, the editorial board, which does our monthly newsletter, which is, uh, George had a copy yep. of that. 
program committee brings in speakers for our monthly meetings. Our monthly meetings, they run, uh, well, uh, on a third Sunday of every month except for the three summer months, which we do a picnic, and the uh, December we do a winter solstice instead of a monthly meeting at a library. Uh, the Public Relations Committee, uh, the Technology and Web Committee website, uh, Speakers Bureau and Education. Uh, Stephanie is Yvonne. She's been, uh, she's going to develop that a little bit more and uh, get us a better list of who's willing to speak at uh, like schools that would want them to speak and the such. And uh, then the Public Services. Services and Charities Committee, which Eric has been doing a lot with. Okay, so if a person is starting to get involved with Minnesota Atheists and wants to make a contribution, uh, do something with the organization, uh, there are volunteer opportunities. Yes, there are. The board can't do all this alone. We want more volunteers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm really uh, excited about the future of Minnesota Atheists. I think that uh, we are going through a, a sea change right now with the, yeah. with the new leadership and the organization has been transformed enormously through Meetup and a lot more social organizations. And One other quick way to yes. donate to the organization. Yes. If you wanted to get anything out of uh, uh, an immediate donation is that you can visit our online store and we have books for sale. We have Mr. Paul Ain't's merchandise for sale as yes. well. So we are secularizing the city of St. Paul, renaming it Mr. Paul, and we're renaming the Saints baseball team to the Ain'ts. So we have some of that merchandise available. And not just Mr. Paul, right? There's also and there's also Ms. Paula. Ms. Paula. Yes, yes. <laughs> just uh, as the Apostle Paul would want it, because we all know that he was uh, all for women's rights, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So. All right. And. Uh, we have some books for sale. Too. We do have some books, yes. Atheist Voices of Minnesota. There's, uh, what is it, 27 contributors to that book, mm -hmm. uh, um, all uh, providing a, a unique perspective about what it's like to be an atheist in, in Minnesota. Yep. Heather, did you have any closing comments? No, you can also get our Minnesota Atheist t shirts on the website as well. Oh, so. yes. 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 Nice. Gotta get that. Yes, good one. <laughs> all right. Well, if you're interested, in what you've heard tonight about the Minnesota Atheist Organization. And why wouldn't you be interested? And why wouldn't you be interested? <laughs> if you send us, uh, if you contact us, and the contact information has been showing up in your screen throughout this program, if you send us your email address, we'll put you on distribution for our uh, electronic newsletter, our, our electronic uh, schedule, calendar, that comes out every Friday and has a lot of events. And if you send us your email address, we'll send you one free copy of our monthly newsletter. If you're interested in us, address. we're interested in you. <laughs> <laughs>